What is up, Nephilim? This is the chick coming at you with another Diablo 4 build guide. What I have put together here may be quite possibly the best new build in the game, pulling off of the new Andarios changes. But before we hop right into it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you're notified every time we grab a new video. Anyway, here's what we're doing we're using Andarios Visage, which got changed today. Now it spawns on the mobs and it deals damage increased by 50%. So now it's 36,000. It's insane, right? We're now using that with Heartseeker because Heartseeker is very strong and this is going to be bouncing around and it's going to be giving us a ranged way to activate our Andarials. We're going to be able to stay super safe. I just blasted a 99. I'm about to show you guys a 99 clear. It is amazing. But before we go into the clear, let me show you guys the talents. So it's very similar to the way we had it set up for Puncture, except for we move over to Heart Seeker with the Enhanced Heart Seeker to give us extra attack speed. And then we get Primary Heart Seeker to give it an extra chance to ricochet. Then we go down to the core skill set here. We get Sturdy just to get some close damage reduction. Stutter Step because I like to move fast. We put one point in Flurry. We're using this exclusively to activate the combo point bonus, which is giving us 45% increased attack speed. We have a lot of attacks per second. We attack once every 14 frames, which means we're like four and a half attacks a second, which is insane. We're going to grab Shadow Step. We're going to have Enhanced Shadow Step so we can get to Discipline Shadow Step. We want to reduce the cooldown when we use it because if we need to get out of dodge, we need to get out of dodge. Got two points into damage over time reduction. These two points you can put pretty much wherever you want. Have one point in the caltrips to move over into enhanced caltrips to make them take more damage for each second. And then we got disciplined caltrips to get extra critical strike chance. We have concussive. Knocking down an enemy gives you some critical strike chance for a couple of seconds. And then we have trick attacks. So whenever we crit a dazed enemy, they're knocked down. So good synergy there. We have one point into dash. Just using this as a movement mobility ability. It's amazing. Helps us get around pretty quick. We've got three points into Agile. Using a cooldown increases your dodge chance by 12%. This is amazing. We love having a little extra dodge. I have these points in the Smoke Grenade because I've been testing the difference between using Poison Imbuement and Smoke Grenade. So you can move these points around if you want as well. I'm using Poison Imbuement to make sure my Eldritch Bounty is procced. But Smoke Grenade might work as well too. Either way, if you're going to do that, put points in Countering Smoke Grenade. Dark Shroud, all the points you can get because this is our defensive. Enhanced Dark Shroud gives it a chance not to be consumed. And then Subverting Dark Shroud to get the Zoom Zooms. We do love moving faster. Three points into Exploit, extra damage against healthy and in injured enemies. Three points into Malice, extra damage to vulnerable enemies, which we're going to have them vulnerable all the time. One point into Poison Imbuement, just so we can activate it to get our extra damage on our Poison. We have three points into Deadly Venom because extra poison damage when we're doing all poison damage. And then we've got two points into Alchemical Advantage, giving us increased attack speed for each poisoned enemy we have. So we're getting 10 for each poisoned enemy, which is amazing. And then Frigid Finesse, you deal 40% increased damage to chilled enemies, increase to 80% against frozen enemies. Mine's higher because I have five points on my gear. This is amazing. This is what we need on our neck. I got one point into Innervation. This moves us up to be able to get Second Wind. Every 100 energy you spend grants you increased Lucky Hit Chance. This is just, since we're using Flurry, it's going to give us increased Lucky Hit Chance, so we're going to get more procs. One point into Adrenaline Rush. Moving down into Haste. Gives us more movement speed and then more attack speed if we ever get below 50% energy, but we don't that often. And then we're using Close Quarters Combat to scale the damage, which is amazing. We love Close Quarters Combat. What Close Quarters Combat does is it gives you two attack speed bonuses. You get 15% for a Marksman skill, 15% for a Cutthroat skill. And then if you have both of them active, you get increased damage multiplicatively for your damage against crowd control. You'll see our gears all crowd control damage. Our current damage is 104%, which means we have 1,040% damage. Let's hop over to the Paragon board. So, the glyphs I am using... I'm going to show you the glyphs I'm using, and then I'm going to show you the path. So, as you can see over here, we have six glyphs activated. We're using Ambush because increased damage from trap skills. We're using Caltrops. We have Bane, increased chance to give us double damage for the amount of poison and increased poison damage. 
We have Canny, non-physical damage is increased. We love that. We have Chip, physical damage increased by the take from us. I don't know why I have that on there. I might have to find something else to put there. We'll see how that goes. Control, you deal increased damage against shield enemies. We're always chilling. And then we have Tracker, poison effects last 40% longer. This is basically you deal 40% more damage. So let me go ahead and show you what I got here. So the first board is the starter board. As always, do not use cookie cutter stuff. Make sure you are getting the things that you need. If you need more life, get more life. If you need more armor, get more armor, right? Put the points where you need them, not necessarily where we put them. First board, we are using tracker that we're going to get that right away so we get it early. Then we are going up to the exploit weakness board second. You're going to put Kanye here. I'm going to have to find something else to put here, but... Uh, so this non-physical damage is amazing. We love non-physical damage. Increased by up to 10% for 15 seconds, so this is always up. Again, remember, push points where you need them. If you need more potion healing or you need more XYZ, push points there. Exploit weakness, whenever you deal damage to a vulnerable enemy, they take increased damage from you. This is all the time, so make sure you get that. It's a good early one to get. Then we will go over here to activate the control glyph. You deal increased damage to chilled or frozen enemies, so it's going to be all the time because of the way our gear is set up. We'll talk about that in a moment. Again, get the nodes that you need. Just make sure you activate the glyphs. Going to move over here to the cheap shot board. You deal increased damage to crowd control enemies. We crowd control everybody, so this is always up. Then we're going to be using the chip physical damage increased by the damage an enemy takes from you by 1% up to 10%. All right, so this just makes them take extra damage from us. I knew I was using that for a reason. <laughs> All right, again, get the nodes you need that help you out. Don't necessarily follow me. Eldritch Bounty, this is amazing. 20% multiplicative damage to whatever imbuement. This is why we have Poison Imbue on our skill bar. We're using it, then we're casting Flurry with three combo points, and we're getting 20% increased attack speed, and or 20% increased damage, and 45% increased attack speed. We have the Bane Glyph here. This is just giving us a chance to get double damage from our poison, and it's also increasing our poison damage by a flat amount. We we'll move over to the last one here. This is the Deadly Ambush Tree. We're not getting Deadly Ambush, but we are putting Ambush in the socket. For every five strength purchase, you get increased damage to target affected by strap skills, so we get increased damage to enemies who are affected by our caltrips. Enemies affected by trap skills take extra damage, so all good. Let's talk about the gear real quick. Ba -ba -da -da. Gear. All right. So, Andaro Visage, absolutely required for the build to work. You have to have this. So make sure you get it. Lucky hit chance, thirty-six thousand seven hundred and seventy-three poisoning damage. It's amazing. On your chest, the biggest thing is you need Dark Shroud. Mine would look a lot better if it didn't have that life per second, but this is the one I have. You want to roll dodge on here, unless you need to get one of your resistances up, and then use whatever resistance you need to get up. Lucky hit chance, you want chance to stun or chance to freeze. On your gloves, you want lucky hit, dex, max life. You're going to need a attack speed roll on one of the things that can roll attack speed. I just happen to have an attack speed roll somewhere else. You're going to have to use a calculator to figure out where your breakpoints are for attacks per second, but I don't need attack speed on my gloves, so I don't have attack speed on my gloves. Maximum life and lucky hit chance. You also want to make sure this has to have damage to crowd control enemies because that is your biggest scaler. And then you want this to have chance to freeze or chance to stun. You want two and two. So this is amazing. I needed some armor and I needed some lightning resistance. So it just let me move some stuff around. This is awesome. If you can do this, get a pair that looks like this because you don't have to have a basic skill ability on your pants because our damage doesn't scale off of the ability itself. So if you can, roll dodge chance on here and then your lucky hit, you want two freeze or stun. And then we're down to the boots. You want max life, armor, and movement speed. Unless you're way over armor cap like I am, then you can put something else there. I have to adjust a little bit accordingly later. Then you want to have chance to freeze or chance to stun here. And then you want extra movement speed because we want to be zooming as much as we can. On your weapon, for this setup, you want to have dex, damage roll, not poison damage, remember, because damage double dips on poison, and max life, guaranteed. Then you want damage to crowd control enemies because that's our hardest scaling. And then you want to roll at least a 59% on Heartseeker. I accidentally got this one twice. Unlucky, I know, but 
if you roll a 59%, it will give you 100% if you crit it once. So roll at least a 59%, reroll it to level 4 until you masterwork on that stat, and then roll up the rest of the way. So being over 100% does us no good, but that's what I got for now. I may rework it later. It depends on how many mats I have. On the neck, movement speed, lucky a chance, frigid finesse, that's what I have. Ideally, you want to have Frigid Finesse and Deadly Venom. Those are going to be your two best on here. So if this had Deadly Venom instead of Movement Speed, I would be Tickled Pink. You have Damage or Crowd Control Enemies. Amazing. That's what we need. And then I tried to roll Movement Speed, but I didn't get it. So on your neck, if you can get whatever you can fluctuate in that second spot, feel free to do that. This is kind of a free spot. Right here on my ring, this is my GG ring. I have lucky at chance, attack speed, and dex. This is the only ability, the only spot that I have to have attack speed on, and it just happened to be a great roll, right? You want agility cooldown because this is going to give your shadow step and your dash more cooldown reduction, which is amazing. And then you want damage to crowd control enemies because that's what we're scaling. On your other ring, again, agility cooldown. So right now I have a resist all because all of my resistances aren't really... Um, Put together yet so at some point i'm going to switch that over to crit chance but since i have attack speed i can afford to have maximum life on this spot so if you can do that do that and then you want to have damage to crowd control enemies again here on your main hand weapon you want to have damage over time or damage whichever you can get damage is better like i said a little bit ago then you want dex and max life you want to roll damage to crowd control enemies caltrips duration I have Caltrip size on this one, and it's exactly the same as the other weapon, but that's what we're using. If you are good at keeping them in your Caltrips, roll Duration on both because you'll get more damage. So, damage, max life, and dex on this. This is a GG one. It's amazing, right? All right, so let's talk about the aspects. So on the chest, you want Umbris because it's going to get your Dark Shrouds up, which is going to give you all of the damage reduction. That's what we need there. We have Shared Misery to spread our crowd control. This is making it so where everything's crowd control, it's going to be taking extra damage. We have Basic Skills give us 20% damage reduction for 7 seconds because we love taking reduced damage. We don't want to be squishy. We have the Concussion one here. Damaging an enemy has a 20% chance to daze them, and then you deal increased damage to dazed enemies. So we're always dazing them, and then if you move your things around and you're using smoke grenade, which you could use, you could drop dash for smoke grenade and be fine. So there you go, they'd be doing that. We have retribution on our two-hander because it double dips, and we want the extra damage to stun or knock down enemies, which is amazing. On one hand, I have the chance to make them vulnerable because just a little bit of extra damage. A couple of the things you use in the puncture build do not work here because we don't we're not actually doing many attacks with poison imbuement and we're not actually using puncture. So those two are gone, so we're using something else. Right here, I'm using elemental, so gain 30% increased damage to whatever type for seven seconds, which is amazing when it rolls to poison. Basic skills grant 30% attack speed, rapid is amazing. Band of inner calm, free extra 10% damage, so that's where we're at. And then we're using Noxious Ice, which is giving us increased damage to chilled enemies and then even more damage to frozen enemies. So that's what we're liking, right? So let's hop right into it. I'm going to show you guys a 99. This is incredibly fast, fun, and easy to play. So remember, only use your combo points when you have three. Otherwise, it's going to snapshot the attack speed wrong and you're not going to attack as fast as you should be. Other than that, Super easy. You're going to use your Poison and Butte to keep your buff up. And you're just going to be zoom, zoom, zooming. It is amazing. It is super fast. It is super easy. It is super fun. Look at all this damage. Like, it is so crazy. So you're just rolling through. You're going to just keep up your buffs. You're going to just pew, pew, pew. Um, obviously, I could do way higher than 99. I just wanted to show you how insane this build actually is. And this is just because of one change to one item, guys. This is just making this absolutely asinine. This is amazing. This is fun. This is fast. This is my new favorite build, bar none, because it takes the damage and fun of Andarials with the survivability of Andarials, adds the safety of being ranged, and you're just going insane. You're running, you're running, you're running, you're 
bonking, you're doing everything that you need to be doing. As you're running around, you are zooming through stuff. You don't have to stick around and wait for the enemies to fall over because you can see that their HP bars are already running out. See how fast those are going down? We are just taking everything down like it's going crazy. We have no idea how great this actually turned out. So we're just going to keep running through here. As you can see, we're already on the second floor. It's only been a little bit over a minute. We're going through. We're just zooming right and then all of these procs are making it even better we're taking it as fast as we can possibly go you never have to stop you never have to slow down you can just go 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 bar none you never have to worry about anything you have a ton of healing you have a ton of just everything you need and your damage is probably the just most insane it could possibly be with the minimum amount of effort and like with the arrows bouncing around and stuff like you just get so many procs with this that being said the puncture version is still incredible it might be better it might be worse but for right now with the ease of play and the speed i think i'm gonna be using this to farm for a hot minute guys this might be the best farming build in the game right now i don't know how else to describe how crazy this is going it's just so fast, so fluid, so smooth, and it just does an incredible amount of damage. Look, it's been 2 minutes and 30 seconds. We just spawned the boss. Coming in. All right, let's grab the Hive Master. Let's get him debuffed. All right, let's do this. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, he knocked me back. Whatever will I do? All right, here we go. Let's see. Um, hmm. Yeah, we're just ripping them pepperonis man like there's nothing like this is incredibly easy guys like there's no no reason not to put this one together dude look how easy that was that was you know right at three minutes three minutes ten seconds like that is incredibly fast incredibly smooth incredibly easy and fun to play everybody should check this one out don't forget if you stuck around hit that like button hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you guys in the next one.